The relentless flow of time is indeed a daunting reality, making us realize that everything can fade away, including all entities in this world, each with its own lifespan. Even the Earth, where you and I reside, has an estimated lifespan of about 7.79 billion years, according to scientists. Some animal species boast lifespans of thousands of years, such as certain types of coral. Now, if we consider all the limits we've discussed alongside the human lifespan, how do they stack up against a human lifetime? Many studies indicate that the limit of human lifespan is around 125 years, a notion reinforced by the field of biomedical gerontology or the so-called Hayflix limit. Why does the human body seem to reach a limit of 125 years, and what is Hayflix true limit? Let's delve into these questions in today's video. Thanks to outstanding advancements in medicine, human lifespan has significantly increased over the past few decades. In the early 19th century, no nation had an average lifespan exceeding 40 years. However, by 1950, some North American countries and most of Europe had average lifespans over 60, and by 2015, the global average had risen. Canada and many countries in Central and Northern Europe even reached average lifespans above 80. Nevertheless, the average lifespan does not reflect the limit of human age, as there are individuals living longer than the mentioned average. However, as we discussed earlier, the proposed lifespan limit is 125 years. Has anyone reached this number? According to record books, the confirmed longest-lived person in the world was a French woman, Madame Jean Calment, who lived to be 122 years and 164 days old. She lived through a total of 17 French presidencies while remaining sharp and insightful. However, there are doubts about the accuracy of this information. Some research and evidence suggest that this could be an elaborate deception by Jean Calment and her daughter. Russian mathematician Nikolai Zak remains unconvinced by Madame Jean Calment's long life story shared with the media, stating, I always doubt the true age of Madame Jean. Her central nervous system differed from others of her age, and geriatric Dr. Valerie Novoselov raised inconsistencies regarding identification details and images from the 1930s. Researchers collaborated to analyze the history and evidence of Madame Jean Calment. Their conclusion is that there's a possibility her daughter, Yvonne, impersonated her to avoid inheritance taxes. Despite remaining many inconsistencies and doubts, determining the precise age limit for humans, especially the number 125, remains a challenge, with no definitive answer from scientists. Until this man appeared, he is Leonard Hayflick, an American biomedical expert, and he made a discovery that changed the field of medicine forever. Both of his parents worked in the medical field. Perhaps the family tradition was one of the reasons driving Hayflick's passionate pursuit of science and biology. What truly fueled his journey to becoming a scientist in the medical field was on his milestone birthday. Hayflick's uncle gifted him a chemistry set for his birthday during his teenage years. His parents built him a small biological and chemical laboratory in the basement of their home. When he started studying at a high school in Philadelphia, Hayflick showed a profound understanding of the field of chemistry. He is said to have started attending the University of Pennsylvania in 1946, but he postponed his studies to fulfill military service. Upon his return in 1948, he decided to continue his studies at the University of Pennsylvania and earned his Ph.D. in 1956. In 1958, Hayflick began researching whether viruses could cause cancer in humans. He decided to extract viruses believed to cause cancer and place them in healthy throat cells to seek evidence. To ensure the research was unbiased, Hayflick needed to use many samples, meaning more cells. During the cell culture process, he noticed something unusual. A group of older cells stopped dividing, and he couldn't understand why that was happening. As a result, he discovered that cells would cease dividing after approximately 50 population doublings, a groundbreaking revelation as, previously, all our cells were believed to continuously divide. However, with this experiment, Hayflick found that after each division, the telomeres found at the end of chromosomes would progressively shorten, and after reaching a critical point, the cells would stop dividing. 
Initially, he dismissed his findings as an anomaly due to contamination or technical error. However, he later observed that other cell culture environments also exhibited similar characteristics. Hayflick stopped studying cancer cells and shifted his focus to the field now known as gerontology, studying the aging process. Over the next two years, he discovered that cellular aging is related to the age of the human body. This is why we live approximately 125 years. His paper, published in 1961, titled The Serial Cultivation of Human Diploid Cell Strains, reported his study where he examined cells collected from various parts of the body, comparing cells from adults and fetal tissue. The results showed that cells would divide about 40 to a maximum of 60 times before stopping, and once they stop, they undergo senescence and die. A similar process applies to humans as they age. This is the cause of natural death, cellular senescence, and, consequently, over time, our bodies undergo senescence, leading to death. This theory is detailed in Hayflick's paper, where he mentions that the length of telomeres presented in different cells may take varying amounts of time to shorten to the point of cell division cessation. Some cells only divide 40 times before stopping due to telomere length. This also demonstrates that each DNA will have unique characteristics. That's why some elderly people age faster than others, all due to genetics. When comparing the correlation with a person's lifespan as cells divide up to the 60th time, it would correspond to the age of 125. Therefore, if their genes contain longer telomeres, they theoretically have a longer lifespan. Because our bodies are composed of cells, this explains why death due to old age is a natural occurrence. Additionally, the paper shows that after each doubling, cells become more fragile and delicate. This implies that after each cell division, our bodies become weaker and immune systems also decline. Today, with medical advancements, human life expectancy continues to increase. However, reaching 125 years, the theoretical limit of human lifespan, is rare. Living longer is not as important as what we have accomplished and the impact we have left on this planet.